Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know martial arts is not the same as self-defense? In a previous video we discussed Itosu's first precept. Karate is not merely practiced for your own benefit, it can be used to protect one's family or master, it is not intended to be used against a single assailant, but instead as a way of avoiding injury by using the hands and feet should one by any chance be confronted by a villain or ruffian. In this precept, Itosu talks about defending yourself, your family or your master against a villain or ruffian. Notice he does not mention what martial art this ne'er-do-well practices. Now this is exactly the problem with most martial arts, and one of the main critiques the more modern martial arts have towards the classical ones. Now when we talk about the modern martial arts, usually we talk about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mixed martial arts, Krav Maga, etc. Whereas the classical ones are martial arts like Karate, Judo, Kung Fu, etc. Usually the main argument is about seemingly useless exercises. Let's face it, they're talking about Kihon, Kata, Kumite in the way it's practiced in many dojos or the equivalents in the other classical martial arts. I have mentioned this before, that the argument is valid when no context is provided or when the context provided is untested either in pressure training or in the streets. The main problem here is pretty straightforward. As Ian Abernethy says in his video about the training matrix, only real is real. Nothing can completely prepare you for what's real, but you can practice for what's common. So you have to look at the statistics. Exciting, I know. Of what are the most used types of attacks used by villains and ruffians. I feel like I'm repeating myself, because yeah, this is catalogued beautifully in Hanshi McCarthy's HAPV theory. However, that is not enough, because although this prepares you for unarmed combat, it will never completely prepare you for the unexpected. When you train, even when you pressure train, your opponent or opponents are willing to fight you, and you are aware of them and willing to fight them. In almost all cases they are even trained in the same martial art you are. That crook that attacks you in the streets will probably not announce what he's going to do, whether or not he's alone, and in what, if any, martial arts he's trained. Chances are he won't be unarmed either. So that's one of the main reasons why karate is not great for self-defense. Now, I'm not saying that this makes karate useless, because a well-trained karateka will have something our bad guy is allergic to. He has confidence. When you're confident, you will behave differently to someone who isn't. Crooks and criminals behave like predators, seeking out the weaker looking victims. This is unfortunately also the reason why women are more likely to be attacked than men. Even if it's a myth that women are always weaker. Good self-defense classes will point this out. Bad ones will claim to teach you ways to perfectly defend yourself. So if you are well trained, it will show when you walk around, and this will deter potential attackers, lowering the chances you will need to physically use your skills. So let's summarize. Martial arts are great for self-defense because they make you look less like prey. This prevents the need for an actual physical test, but in the best cases, they also teach you to physically defend yourself when necessary. Next week, we'll open our wardrobe and take a look at the karate uniform. So what about you guys? I'm sure this is a subject most of you have a strong opinion on. Leave the comments down below. You guys know I'm always curious about your opinions. That's it for now. I wish you a great day. And as always, thanks for watching.